Hey homies, welcome to High Altitude Home Setting. I'm Rob, and today we got an update video for you. So we're gonna be updating a few things. First, we're gonna go look at the uh, chickens and um, update on the chicken that had gape worm. She's doing real good, but we're just gonna check in on her. Uh, we're also gonna do an update tour of the garden because it's popping, it's looking real good. So uh, we're gonna check that out. I'm also gonna show you guys a little potato maintenance. So I'm gonna show you guys how we maintain our potatoes here on the urban homestead and what you guys can do with your potatoes to maximize your harvest. You might have noticed that we grow a lot of potatoes here on the urban homestead and the reason we do that is twofold. So one is because potatoes are really easy to grow, at least for me it seems like. The second reason is because we actually feed our potatoes to our mealworms. So we have a mealworm farm that I haven't showed you guys yet, we'll get to that. But uh, the mealworms eat the potatoes and then we feed the mealworms to the chickens. So it's kind of like a closed loop system we have here, or we're trying to get there at least. And that's why, that's one of the biggest reasons we grow a lot of potatoes is so we can feed it to uh, the mealworms. So the weather's great, it's not too hot yet. Let's get at it. First thing we're gonna do is go check on this chicken. So I wanna let you guys know that the chicken's doing fine. She seems to be recovered all the way. I watch her a lot, observe her a lot, and she doesn't seem to be sneezing or gaping or anything like that anymore. So um, that's what you want. You want, after your three-day treatment, to observe them and just make sure that all the symptoms have gone away and you're not you know, seeing anything else. They're eating good, drinking good. And remember, after your three-day treatment, you're gonna wait three days before you eat the eggs and then you're gonna wait three months until you treat again. All right, so we're gonna go check on these chickens real quick. See how the girls are doing this morning. Hey, girls. Hey, mamas. In y'all's favorite spot. Cochins were, and those are the yellowish ones, the buff cochins. They're the ones that were having the issues with the gape worm. They are doing great. Blue there, the blue and orange one, that's our broody hen. She actually started coming out uh, probably about two or three days ago and she's been out every day and looking a lot better so I think that uh, the spell, brooding spell is broken with her. We got number two up here. <laughs> hey mamas. So yeah the girls are doing all good. Just wanted to give a little update on that. So we are on the fourth day after the treatment and we are eating the eggs again so so that's the update on the chicken uh, remember with gape worm it can live in the soil for up to four years so it can be a little bit a little bit of a bugger to get rid of um, but just keep at it keep observing your chickens and if you see anything wrong treat them and remember from the other video uh, the couple tips of trying to keep gape worm at bay uh, turning your soil, keeping your coop clean, because that's the biggest one, because the gape worm actually lives in the feces, or the gape worm can actually live in the soil. <laughs> Girl's going crazy. Of your coop area. So, turning the soil can help, and just keeping a clean coop area can also help a lot. All right, I want to show you guys these peaches first, these things. Got about five on there. You see up here, there's a couple more. All right, so those peaches are coming in strong. Um, we're gonna go check out the rest of the garden here and see what else is popping. Gonna take a little walk around and check on everything. First, we have our oregano plant here. 
and you can see uh, uh, the circle around it. I um, planted flowers the other day, so we got our marigolds in, and here around the tree, same thing. We like to put um, marigolds and sweet alyssums. Sweet alyssum. Um, so we'll do those around the uh, pot, the uh, potato pots, potato plants too. I just haven't got to it, but we got our sunflower back there. That's an experiment. I'm trying to see how the sunflower grows in the pot here, and it's doing really well. So, new food plots this year, so these are doing good too. Potatoes popping are looking good. Uh, this is a hairy vetch plant that we planted on the tree. But uh, this thing has just exploded. And I'm letting it go because hairy vetch is beneficial to the soil and it also acts as a natural mulch. So I'm letting that guy go. And the insects just love it. So here's our pollinator spot. We got our wildflowers coming up. Some bachelor button, some sunflowers in the back. So here's our blueberry plant, and she's not really doing much, but I wanted to show you guys real quick. Even the smallest plants. See this bunch of blueberries? Yeah, she's trying. Quick update on the monsters. <laughs> so the raspberry plant, still beasting. You can see the little raspberries here starting. Getting close here for you. See these little guys. So, the elderberry bush. Also going crazy. Here we are at the herb garden. So, this is popping pretty good. This is our chamomile. I make tea out of this, so... See? That's what you make your tea out of. Um, we have our sage, coming up strong. Calendula over here. There's our peppermint taking over. We have our borage coming in strong. And here, I want to show you guys that something, something that's kind of amazing to me um, that's happened this year. So we're going to come over here, and this is just at the edge of the walkway. If you see, like, I kind of use this as a walkway along the boxes. But if we look here closely, this is pretty amazing. So this is lettuce. This right here. This right here, too. This, too. All this. This is lettuce. These are all lettuce that um, actually self-seeded. Um, we didn't plant these, so um, we had lettuce in this box last year, and we let some of it go to seed so we could collect the seeds for next year. And I guess some blew over here and seeded itself. So that just goes to show you that you don't even need amended soil. I mean, this soil is not very good over here or anything like that. You can grow vegetables anywhere. So if you guys have any space at all, utilize it. Um, even if you don't have the money to buy soil amendment or anything like that, um, just try it. See what will grow. See what you can get going. And if you're anxious about anything, attack that anxiety. Remember, action is the enemy of anxiety. So if you're anxious about growing stuff or say, for instance, food prices with what's going on or anything like that, just get at it and get into action. Do something, grow something, because that'll help you feel better and it will help you save money and it will help you be healthier so all those things all right guys we'll do a quick sweep of the uh, boxes here to see how everything's coming along garlic's doing well you can see our carrots here coming up sunflowers it's only a uh, june 17th I think so we still got some time here in Colorado Springs before stuff gets popping sunflowers squash popping radishes 
and our corn coming up. Peas, kale, stuff like that in the back there. So that's a quick sweep of the boxes. Um, let's get to the potatoes. I'm gonna show you guys how we do maintenance here on the urban homestead and how to maximize your harvest. So potatoes are really easy to grow and they're very hardy. They don't require much maintenance. They do have some problems with disease, uh, with blight um, is, one, is the main issue that potatoes can have. So you wanna look out for that. I'll show you how to identify that on um, one of these potatoes here. Um, the other thing that you need to do with potatoes is cut the flowers. So after potatoes mature for probably about two or three months, they'll start to grow flowers on them. And the flowers are not beneficial to the potato. They actually um, take energy from the potato. So you want to snip those off basically. So here's what they look like. Um, you can see that they grow on the ends of the potatoes. Um, none of these are really sprouted yet or um, opened yet. But um, when they do, they're kind of like a white flower. So um, this is what they look like. I took a few shots here. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how we cut them off here. So nothing special, you just need a pair of clippers. All right guys, so nothing special. Come in here, snip them off. Snip them off. And you don't want to feed these to your chickens. They're actually poisonous to chickens, so um, you can just toss them, toss them in your compost if you want. Um, but they'll keep coming as the uh, potatoes mature more, so you just want to keep an eye on your potatoes as they're growing. You know, get out in your garden every couple of days and um, give your potatoes a look over because you really don't want those flowers to mature too much because they can really take a lot of energy and nutrients from your potatoes that are growing in the ground. So even if you just small, see a little small cluster starting, just give it a snip. It's not going to hurt the potato. And they usually grow at the most mature point of the plant, so you know the these tall stems that are the main parts of the plants, so they're gonna grow on the end of them. And I'm just gonna go over the rest of these guys here. Um, I searched around, I was trying to find a plant that might look like it have uh, any signs of blight on it, so I could show you guys that. Um, I couldn't really find a good example. But what I did find, this isn't really a good example, but if you can see on this leaf, the black spots on it, that could be an early sign of blight. It's probably not, but um, if you ever see yellowing leaves with black spots on them, on your potato plants, then um, unfortunately you might have blight. And to my knowledge, there's nothing you can really do about it other than dig the potatoes up so that your other plants don't get blight your other potato plants and so it's a pretty crappy thing to get with the potato plants so blight's pretty crappy um, like I said to my knowledge I don't really know if there's a way of fixing it a way of preventing it so I've read is to not try not to overwater your potatoes so that's could be one of the biggest thing biggest problems with potatoes if you're overwatering them and so that's another thing you want to keep in mind when you're planting your tomatoes you don't want to plant them too soon in the late winter or even early spring because if you get snow or if you get a bunch of rain um, they can get overwatered and that can cause them to rot and that's also another good reason to keep your potatoes separate and that's part of the reason why I do these separate pots with the um, potatoes and separate them over here because if my boxes happen to get blight or something like that, then I still have this backup crop here um, to feed the mealworms and to try to keep that closed loop system going. All right, that's all we got for you guys today. I'm Rob, this is High Altitude Homesteading. Have a good weekend.